Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today I'm going to be doing a preview of the 70-200 2.8S Nikkor lens for the Z-mount Nikon camera system. I didn't want to do a full review yet because although I've had this for a week and I have actually had a day of taking a thousand photos at a wildlife sanctuary with it, I'm not quite ready to give you my final thoughts and my full review, but I just thought I'd do a preview of my thoughts after a week so you can see how I'm getting on. And if you have any questions, I can perhaps then answer those in my next full review video, which I'll hopefully be doing in the next couple of weeks. So this lens was released literally last week. Um, I got my hands on it pretty quickly, which was great. My pre-order worked out really well. Um, it's a hefty piece of glass as all 70 or 200 lenses are. I think it's fair to say it's something of a standard lens um, for professionals. And I've had the 70 or 200 AFS VR1 version um, since 2008. And that lens was initially announced in 2003. So I thought if I upgrade now, it's probably a good time for it because this will probably last me another 15 uh, plus years probably. Overall, it's very understated in the way it looks. So if I just take the lens hood off, it's all black. You've got some white writing. You obviously have that OLED screen here at the top, but overall really, really understated lens. Um, it's something of a theme with Nikon Z mount. We're certainly noticing the lenses are all very understated. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It's quite nice not to stand out and not to have the gold ring at the front. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting design choice. In terms of materials, so it feels hefty and it certainly feels um, well made, but there are a lot of plastics on this lens that I'm not used to. So the 7200 VR1 that I use usually, or have used in the past rather, is all metal. The whole thing, metal construction, feels super solid. And although this feels solid, you know, the, some of these rings are plastic, they just don't feel quite as well made um, as the original version that I had. That being said, I did use the more recent 7200, the um, version with the fluorine coating, um, and that one didn't feel quite as well made as my VR1 version either, so maybe this is sort of on par with that. So having actually had a fair bit of time with this, I love the um, short throw of the, of the zoom ring. So to get from 7200, you can actually do in a single action using your thumb which is just great. Like, I love the fact it's nice and short. You can move from 70 to 200 really quickly. So if you're shooting a fast moving um, object, really helps you to get that shot equally. It's just easier to use. Um, I also use the 200 to 500 5.6 quite regularly, and I love that lens. But the actual action of moving from 200 to 500 millimeters is a big twist to the point where you have to readjust your hand halfway through, which isn't ideal, so this is certainly a much better design. I think a big feature is that OLED screen, or at least I think that's what Nikon wants it to be. Um, I actually tried to use it properly for the first time when I was at that wildlife sanctuary, and I was actually a bit disappointed. In bright sunlight, you just can't read it. And I wanted to see um, where Infinity was because I, I was having trouble focusing through a, a, a wire fence. And I just couldn't actually see on the screen, so it kind of made it a bit pointless. And another thing I noticed is the screen turns itself off really quickly, and it doesn't turn itself back on when you, um, say, adjust the focus ring or use the zoom ring. So you're kind of left having to press the button constantly, and that's not something I, I enjoy. Um, I really wish that that wasn't the case. You also have five um, buttons on here, function buttons. Um, you have uh, function one, function two on here. You can set them to do different things. You can set them to, for instance, hold your exposure and, and focus. So it's good to have those. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. You then also have the control ring, which I think is really cool. So it's at the very back of the lens, which it's a bit fiddly to get to, I won't lie. But it certainly allows you to change some settings on the fly. So I have it set at the moment to ISO because when I was shooting at the wildlife sanctuary, um, it was at dusk and it was getting darker and darker. And depending on where I was shooting, whether it was into the setting sun or whether it was into the shadows, the actual difference in um, lighting was very pronounced. So I found it quicker to actually use the um, control ring to change my ISO. Though it must be said, I did change it by accident a few times just by brushing against it. So it is quite sensitive. 
Um, you can also change it to, for instance, um, use it as an aperture ring. So I, I quite like that. The focus ring is fine. It feels good. There's a decent amount of resistance, but not too much. Um, but I don't like the fact it's fly-by-wire. I actually prefer the older version. Um, I'm sure it's because of the uh, stepping motors they're using for focusing. Um, but yeah, I, I'd prefer to actually have a physical um, connection to the focus system rather than just a, a digital one. So you kind of have to guess rather than um, learning by feel. But again, that's, that's not a tremendous issue. I do quite like the, the tripod foot on this. I actually prefer it to the one on my 7200 um, VR1. So if I just unscrew this, it comes off um, quite nicely. It's a, it's a fairly well-made um, piece. I think it is solid metal, which is good. Um, and then you can obviously move the actual ring out the way a little bit more just so you can shoot without it in the way. Um, it must be said you can't remove the end ring. That's just fixed um, all the time. I don't think that's a major issue, to be honest with you. I don't think it's something that's going to bug people. If you want to change the foot, you can. Um, but I actually leave it on most of the time because I find if I remove them from my lenses, um, I tend to either misplace them or not have them on there when I actually want them, which really annoys me. So I would certainly say it's worth keeping on there. Now, something I found really cool about this lens hood is there's actually a felt material on the inside. Now, I haven't actually ever owned a Nikon lens that has this, um, so quite interesting. Um, it's a bit of a dust magnet from what I've noticed, but I guess it's to minimize reflections inside the lens hood. So interesting that they've done that, um, just not something I've seen before. If I mount the uh, lens hood on here, it certainly clicks in place with a very satisfying sound. Um, so you know it's gonna be locked in place and won't come off like some of the cheaper lenses. Very similar to the um, old version that I have, though it's a lot more shallow, which is interesting. The, the one for the um, older version is a lot longer. So I'm sure there's a design decision there. Of course, the big one, and, and because it's a preview, I, I won't go into too much detail, but in terms of image quality, this is just superb. Um, I did a, a bit of a portrait shoot with this um, and it was so incredibly sharp, um, really quick to focus, really easy to use, felt great. And then at the um, sanctuary, the, the photographs we got there, were really happy with it. Um, actually, a lot of the photos that we took were with the 1.4 teleconverter in place. So I did actually have the teleconverter delivered at the same time as the lens um, and it must be said, with the TC 1.4Z, um, this is, it's a phenomenal combination. I mean, it doesn't give you that much more reach. You get about 280 millimeters, um, and the lens obviously changes to an f4, but it was superb to use, easy to use, worked well, um, and I'm going to have a review of the teleconverter coming separately as well, though I'm sure I'll mention it in the full review. So overall, I think that this lens is a great addition to the Z series. Um, it certainly was needed. It focuses as fast on my Z6 as it does on the Z50 that I also have. Um, it feels good. It's very well balanced. That's another thing I like. Um, overall, I think Nikon made the right decision in sort of waiting and bringing this out when it was, you know, perfect, because I, I think it genuinely is. Um, probably the sharpest zoom lens I've ever used, um, without a doubt. Equally, there's some cool features, a lot of customization. Um, one thing I didn't mention is you do have the switch here, so you have an auto manual switch and you also have a focus limiter switch. I don't know why there isn't a VR switch. I know you can change it inside the camera, but I really would have preferred having the sport um, and normal and also the or sport active um, and then the VR on off switch on the side of the lens. Um, I think it's a bit poor that Nikon didn't do that to be honest. But yeah, that's my uh, preview of this lens. Overall, really cool. Um, we're gonna be looking at things like how effective the vibration reduction is, a bit more on the image quality, the colors in the full review, which will be coming out soon. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that. But overall, this is a great piece of glass. And I think if you buy it, you won't um, regret it. Thank you very much for watching. Any comments, pop them in the comment section below. Um, if you have any questions about the lens, pop them in there and I hope you can cover those in my full review. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as I mentioned, please do subscribe, not only to not miss the next um, full review of this lens, but because it really does help the channel and I'd really appreciate it at the moment. Thank you very much for watching and I do hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.